Hi, I'm Tim Martinez with Arroyos and Foothills Conservancy. Welcome to our virtual field trip, Geology of the Rosemont Preserve. I'm Doug Gibbon. I'm a geologist, uh, actually technically a geophysicist, according to my title at USGS. So here at the Rosemont Preserve, we're at an interface between where humans meet nature. Uh, we're right at a boundary of the San Gabriel Mountains to the north and the valleys to the south that go all the way out to the Los Angeles Basin. Before we even talk about the geology of the Rosemont Preserve, we have to talk about the geology of the San Gabriel Mountains and even bigger. We live on the surface of the very beautiful and habitable Earth, but we live on the surface only. And beneath it is the very hot and molten core, the dense core that is so hot it remains liquid. And so the surface rides on top of this molten core and occasionally it cracks, just like the crust of a bread will sometimes crack. And it will leave these large land masses called plates. And where we live is on the Pacific plate. Occasionally they move and they bump and they grind and they push on each other and they create something called earthquakes. Everybody knows the word earthquake, but some people are a little confused about what an earthquake is. There's actually two things. The first is the, the shaking that you feel. The earth shook, an earthquake. But why did that happen? Well, it happened because a fault slipped. And from a geophysics point of view, that is the earthquake, right where the fault broke. Now, a fault is a breakdown through the crust of the earth, and the rock on either side is in motion. It's being squeezed together by the plate tectonic forces that control the crust of the planet. Those plates are trying to slide past one another, and they stick. There's friction in between the interface of those two plates, the fault zone. Now we can model that by snapping our fingers. If you snap your fingers, your thumb and your middle finger are trying to slide past one another, but there's friction between them. And so they, they don't slide, they stick. And you can feel the stress build up in your fingers. You can feel that as you push. And then finally, the stress overcomes the frictional resistance to sliding between your thumb and finger and it snaps violently, sending sound waves out in the air in all directions. Well, that's an earthquake. It's that snap causing sound waves not to move through the air, but through the rock of the crust of the earth. And that's what we feel as earthquake shaking. So here in the Rosemont Preserve, we have the San Gabriel Mountains to the north and the Crescenta Valley to the south. And the reason for that difference in elevation is the Sierra Madre Fault. The mountains are being thrust up to the north of the fault and the valley goes downward relative to it. In fact, there's another slice of that kind of up-down motion just to the south, the Verdugo Hills. On the other side of the Crescenta Valley are another mountain range that are being pushed up and a fault is on the other side, on the Glendale side of that range. Here on the Rosemont Preserve, the majority of the rocks are between 65 million and 255 million years old. That's a long time ago. Especially when you think that the Rosemont Preserve and the San Gabriel Mountains were not even created until six million years ago. So these rocks, which were created in the Mesozoic era, were probably around 200 million years old by the time the San Gabriels and the Rosemont Preserve was created. So this is a typical piece of granite. It's a combination of different minerals that have crystallized from a magma. And you can see the different crystals because they're different colors. Now here are specimens of some of those different minerals. The pink is called feldspar. And this is actually the most common mineral on Earth. One you've probably heard of and think is more common is quartz. And it makes up the grayish, whitish part of this rock. And then the black specks are another rock called hornblende. And you can see those in this specimen as well. All of these are made primarily of silicon and oxygen. And fully three quarters of all of the rocks on the surface of the Earth are made of those same simple ingredients, silicon and oxygen. Silicate minerals make up virtually all of the crust of the Earth, with rare exceptions. And so that's what we find in all these minerals in granite. 
So the igneous rocks that the San Gabriels are made of wear away, they weather, and the individual crystals that make up that igneous rock are broken apart. And we find them here under our feet in the preserve. So the same minerals that we find in the granite, the feldspar, the quartz, the hornblende, we find as the erosional product coming down out of the San Gabriels to make up this material, which is sometimes called decomposed granite. That weathering process will continue. The feldspar will ultimately degrade into clay, and only the quartz will survive all the way down to the ocean, and it'll become the grains of sand on the beach. So the story of this rock is really the story of the Rosemont Preserve and the story of the San Gabriel Mountains and the story of the transverse ranges and the stories of all the mountain ranges in California and the stories of tectonic plates and the stories of the global earth. This beautiful little rock tells quite a story, not just of itself, but of all of us.